Let's turn now to the war in Europe, where Russia claims to have made gains in Ukraine's Luhansk region, saying its forces broke through multiple Ukrainian defensive lines in the area, with the progress forcing Ukrainian troops to pull back by about two miles. Now, Russia's claims have not been independently verified, and Ukrainian officials have not yet commented on this. Both sides have stalled in their respective positions for weeks now, with few territorial changes. Ukraine's defense minister said yesterday his nation's forces will still need, quote, a few months to be fully trained on the new batch of Western-supplied weapons. The United Kingdom's defense minister says they estimate that 97 percent of Russia's standing army is currently inside Ukraine. Joining us now, Senior Coalition's Advisor for Concerned Veterans for America, retired Master Sergeant Jason Beardsley. He is a decorated combat veteran and intelligence officer, and we are grateful that he is with us this morning. So uh, great to see you, uh, sir. The, there's been some talk for a while now that Russia was preparing a massive uh, a new offensive, perhaps you know, when the weather warms some and it's easier to move troops and armor. But there's been growing indications, we heard this from the NATO Secretary General in recent days, that, that offensive, at least in its early stages, has already begun. We may be seeing that in the Luhansk region. What's your assessment right now of the current state of the fighting? Yeah, I think your um, you know intro was great. Obviously, uh, Russia is uh, coming up on a, a presidential address, so Vladimir Putin's going to be addressing his people shortly, and he would like to package whatever he's got on the ground as a win. Uh, but from the beginning of this, um, and I think General Milley really framed this well, uh, Russia's been losing this, and uh, they've been hammered on the ground. They've lost a lot of forces. Uh, you mentioned the defense minister of uh, Britain talked about 97 percent of the army being in Ukraine. In addition to that, he's talked about World War One like casualties for Russia. This is why right right now he doesn't have a lot to uh, promote or celebrate. So they're going to sort of uh, use a little bit of propaganda speak to get the people whipped up and to suggest that Russia is actually on the on the offensive here. But uh, all, all signs indicate this is just more of a back and forth slog that you're going to see over the the next however long this conflict uh, lasts. Yeah, both sides in this conflict keeping an eye on next week, which will be the one year mark of this war. As you mentioned, President Putin expected to address his nation there. We're going to hear from President Zelensky and, of course, President Biden is off to Poland early next week where he'll talk about the importance of the alliance staying together. So this next phase of the war does feel like a critical one. I've talked to some military officials, White House uh, senior White House aides who say, look, they're rushing this weaponry to the front, but we know tanks aren't going to get there for a while. Um, and that the Russians, there's some talk of another conscription effort. They may have more manpower to throw into the meat grinder. So how important do you think these next few weeks will be to set a tone for a conflict that probably will rage for months or more? Uh, you know, you're, you're right. Uh, setting this tone right now is going to be critical. This stage is important. And again, you saw uh, General Milley start to signal and indicate to the American people that fighting for a complete victory is a little bit idealistic. And right now, what he's pointing to and the reason that he framed this as Russia is losing on the ground is to suggest that for those folks who want that victory, it's right in front of them. We've seen Russia at the moment they decided to roll over the borders of Ukraine and get their heavy tanks stuck in the mud. And, and consecutively get hammered day after day for a year straight, that's the loss for them. So Americans can feel good about that. And we've done a lot of um, uh, supply and support. But there's a time, you hear this from Secretary Del Toro talking about depletion of U.S. forces, uh, Mark Milley warning against this, and other signals coming from the military leadership that too much of this stretches the United States out and reduces our own readiness. So we really start, uh, should be looking for what you and I talked about last time, which is that off-ramp. And if, if the Biden administration doesn't start putting pressure, uh, not just on Russia, but on Xi Jinping, you know, he just met recently with Iranian leaders. So what we don't want to do is force this up, as my friend Reed Smith says, the escalation ladder, so that it causes more and more conflict. This could go on forever if we don't start pushing for that off-ramp. Yeah, it's a great point. The U.S., of course, has been very deferential to the Ukrainians about when they feel like they are ready to start talking settlement. No sign of that yet. And as you point out, it's been setback after setback for the Russian military. But there is no sign per intelligence analysts that Vladimir Putin is going to stop anytime soon. Retired Master Sergeant Jason Beardsley, we will be leaning on your expertise again soon. Thank you for joining us this Look morning.